nightmare of every software engineer working for big tech slash fan companies. And if you are an on call at Amazon, then it doesn't get any worse. In this video, we are going to see what exactly an on call is. What does a software engineer do while they are in on call? I'm going to share my experience as well while I was at Amazon as an on call engineer. And also, did my on call experience at Amazon take my sleep away? So let's get started with the video. So on call is basically an add on support that every software engineer or a software development engineer slash SD has to give while they are working in this big tech companies. Imagine you're working on a product, right? And you are developing some features, right? And then you are testing it out and then pulls it to production. Now, once it goes to production, the customer might face a lot of issues. So imagine you are using some product, right? And you face issues. What do you do? You raise a ticket, right? And then you expect the support team to solve it. There obviously is a support team who looks into the ticket, but what if that's a technical issue? There is a bug and we need to solve it right or there are some issues with the support engineer can't really look into there the software developers come in and the software developers who are specifically on call looks into those tickets now some of these tickets can be technical some of these tickets cannot be technical as well but as a software development engineer and as SDE when you are on call you are expected to look into these tickets and priority first of all let's understand that you know what is this on call cycle okay. So let's say you have a team of 10 members and you are owning a particular product or maybe a particular feature of that product, right? So what happens is every week, two members from your team has to be on call. Sometimes it is one, but most in big tech, it's, it's mostly two members. One is a primary on call, one is a secondary on call, but it is expected that both of them will be available. But yeah, if anything comes, then first the primary on call is notified, then the secondary on call is notified. If the primary on call doesn't respond, how is it done? I would come to that later. And if none responds, then your manager is notified and that is a, not a good position to be in. Okay, so first of all, understand this rotation cycle. So every week, as I said, there will be two members. Now the next week, there would be an on call handle over. I'm also going to discuss what exactly that is. There will be two other members from the team who would be taking up the on-call responsibilities and this will continue till again you start off from the first two members again. Normally we have a team of 10-12 that's that's what the general number is. So you can expect that every five or six weeks if you are very lucky your <laughs> that dreaded week, that dreaded one week will come in your uh, software development engineer life cycle. Now let's take a look at the expectations. Okay, so as I told you that you know uh, the customers will raise some tickets and you have to look into those tickets while you are on call, right? So now the tickets can be technical. If the tickets are technical, what you have to do is you have to go towards the logs, right, in the cloud and see where exactly it failed. Sometimes it happens that you know the, it is working as expected. If that happens, then you have to update that ticket saying to the customer that hey, this is behaving as expected. Let's say there is a bug. Do you genuinely see there's a bug and what you have to do is if you feel that this bug is small and can be resolved quickly then you go ahead and resolve this but if you feel this is a big technical bug then you discuss with the product managers and the other stakeholders right also sometimes a customer and then what you do is you close that ticket and then you take a separate feature in your sprint and work on it if you feel that takes some time because on-call tickets are supposed to be resolved first now it is expected that though you would be having some work in your current sprint when when i mean by current work it means the development work that you generally do to build a feature now you can halt that you can put it a halt for that one week and you're expected to primarily focus on the on-call tickets and resolve as many tickets as possible. Now, by the end of week one, as I told in the previous point, that there is an on-call handover. So what happens is in that on-call handover, every team members join, especially the team members who are going to be on-call next after you. And in that handover, you hand over the tickets to them. You say that basically these are the tickets that we resolved. These were the tickets when we took over. These are the tickets we resolved. What the learnings and experiences that you had might help the other, other team members as well in the long run. If they face similar issues, that's the basic the expectation and uh, then after that you tell them that hey these are the tickets that we couldn't resolve if there's an update on those unresolved tickets to provide them so that the next on-call team members can take the work from there and you also discuss about the priority and the current situation so that basically what happens in an on-call handover we also have to write an on-call report where we uh, mention about these things only now in this week you are expected to be available 24 into 7 there are ticket priorities which i would come later right or if any tickets of higher priority comes right then uh, what happens is you have to download an app called Pager, uh, yeah, something somewhere like that. And basically what happens is an alarm bell rings in your phone and whatever time and be it, you have to wake up and you have to acknowledge it, right? And if you don't acknowledge, then it goes to the secondary on call. If he doesn't acknowledge, then it goes to a manager, right? So this is the basically the cycle. Now let's take a look at the ticket priority so that in that we would be able to understand these things a little bit better. The ticket priority at Amazon, the ticket priority was of five levels, starting from SEV1 to SEV5. And SEV5 was the least priority and SEV1 was the highest priority. If SEV1 happens, it means that there's a there's a, like a big outage of some tier one services. 
and everything is down right and you have to leave everything wherever you are no one no one would care you have to start working it on it right there have i seen seb1 no i have not seen seb1 because seb1 is like a very very tier one service right and it it is it has a lot of impact even the end users might see that impact seb2 i have seen a lot of seb2s and it is a very higher priority right seb3 seb4 seb5 are kind of fine seb4 and seb5 are sometimes a bit overlooked we generally work on seb3s a lot but if seb3s are very critical because sometimes if you don't work on seb threes and it gets delayed sometimes it also gets escalated to seb twos as well and the idea is not to go for seb twos right now in my experience the crazy thing that i remember once i was on call and i was solving tickets uh, i mean i worked from started one go from 10 uh, worked till 130 am and then when i was going to sleep i got this seb two ticket and then we have to like like to sit and resolve that so yeah it was a kind of a crazy situation and that's how mostly the on calls uh situation is when, especially if you're an sd at amazon sometimes it depends on teams as well some teams have more workload so more tickets some teams have doesn't have they are just built started the product so they don't have that much amount of workload also the fun fact is you don't get paid anything extra for being on call however in some companies they do pay you extra for being on call for example in google you get paid extra for being on call and my personal experience on calls are very very scary and sometimes it is kind of boring as well because after a certain point of time you know the type of issues that are coming there is not much issues that like seems too much out of the world and it mostly becomes support work like it's the same thing that you have to do it's like you have to go and check the logs and see what's going on what's wrong put at the time stamps and check what went went wrong within that particular time stamp and stuff like that sometimes there are configurations issues sometimes there are issues which you really can't do anything about so there's not much development that you can get but overall it's not a very nice experience and it becomes super hectic uh, when you are on call right i remember when i was switching teams at amazon there were a couple of teams who were writing that no on call for our team and that was basically like a usp like you're selling your team by saying you have no on call uh, but the thing is that eventually the, they will have on call the reason that they don't have on call right now is they're building the product and the product is not live to customers right so if you if the product is not live to customers then there's nothing called on call support right that's that's basically the thing and i wanted you to understand at what exactly is this on call is and see the other part of being a software engineer as well so i hope that you enjoyed this video uh, not sure whether you enjoyed it it might scare you a bit but it's okay it's fine you have to know everything at the end of the day and my job is to provide every perspective out there based on my experience i hope you like this video and i will see you in some other video till then stay safe and don't forget to subscribe to my channel I hope you like this video and I will see you in some other video till then stay safe and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you like this video and I will see you in some other video till then stay safe and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you like this video and I will see you in some other video till then stay safe and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.